turn to ban. Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome into our first broadcast here at the Curse Invitational, sponsored by Alienware. Leading things off, we got a hell of a good match between QPAD and Navi on the way, and a couple of storylines that are worth talking about. Navi enters play today the way they enter almost every series, a fan favorite team with more star power than a solar system, and with a big fat question mark over their head as to which squad we'll get to see. Will it be the high flying playmaking squad that dominated opponents with creative drafts and individual performances? at every position, or will it be the thin, sometimes flat team that was run out of the G1 League by Team Liquid Squad that, if we're to be honest, made it look easy? Their first series today will be one where they need to shake off a week's worth of rust, as the last time they were in action in a competitive series dates back to April 27th, when they destroyed Roxkis 5 to nothing at a best-of-five show match. That dominant performance put the cap on what was a very successful April, in which Navi notched an EMS land win and a total competitive record of 9-4. and four. It's no secret, though, that Navi has a tendency to occasionally take, take games and sometimes entire series off in online competition, but with the Curse Invitational format being one in which, which is more focused and a bit shorter, it'll be the same question as always surrounding Navi. Who do we get to see today? QPAD is the complete opposite, really, in their situation. They interplay today with a lot to prove in the long term as well as in the short term. Sporting a roster with a lot of star power of its own, QPAD has, the, has two huge opportunities to prove that they're legit here in May. The first and most obvious is their bid to the International Western Qualifiers and their appearance here in the Curse Invitational is the second. The truth is, as good as they've shown us they can be and as popular as they are with fans, absolutely any sense of consistency has continued to elude them. They were 5-7 and seven across April, mediocre by any standard, but more to the point, they were unable to notch a single win against any team considered to be top-tier competition and even dropped a few, uh, a few games to teams that were well below their reputation and perceived skill level as well. This is going to be a match where QPAC looks to shake off the rust themselves as the last time they were in action was eight days ago. They'll likewise be looking for a little revenge against Navi squad that has bested them. They bested them one to nothing, I should say. The last time these two teams met in the joint Dota Masters 13 back in April. Though they're certainly going to be looking ahead to the Western qualifiers today represents a major opportunity for them in itself. The chance to test themselves against some international competition and a chance to demonstrate that they're ready to find that consistency that they still lack against top tier talent. Again, thank Thank you for joining us for the broadcast. I'm AC, bringing you all of the action, and I'm joined by none other than Merlini. Merlini, how you doing, my friend? Hey, AC, how you doing? Great to have you in. Yeah, looking at the match. Oh, hold on. Okay, see, my big intro. This is usually where we, sl we slowly transition into uh, talking about the draft, but pretty sure I just saw Skywrath Mage picked up. Yeah, uh, Icefrog has been really quick about implementing these new heroes in the captain's mood, and I'm glad to see Navi already pick them up. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a bit about that, Merlini. Tell me about Skyrath. He's new to the pool. I haven't had a chance to cast him, but, well, almost no one has had a chance to cast him in Dota 2. But, I mean, we can already look at the lineups. Looking at Q-Pad, very stable, the high-value pick that is Nyx Assassin leading off with a Clockwork and a Lone Druid. It doesn't get a lot more stable than that. Gives you reach for initiation, gives you good counter initiation, gives you good mid- and late-game viability with the carry potential of the Lone Druid. On Na'Vi's side, we see the Rubik pick up. No surprise there, as that is considered by Puppy to be the most powerful support in the game. Game. He will almost always take Rubik in the first three if he gets the chance. Life Stealer, we all know what that hero can do. But um, uh, obviously, the big story and what people are going to be talking about right now is Skywrath Mage. So talk to me about the way you see that hero fitting into the game as we see it right now. I mean, so just checking out streams yesterday, I believe Dendi was playing him a lot. So he's most likely going to be their solo mid. He is quite level dependent, and most people skill him maxing Arcane Bolt as well as Ancient Seal. And maxing the Ancient Seal just gives huge amounts of burst. Although he doesn't synergize well with Nyx, because Nyx doesn't have that much magic damage, he is a pretty good mid hero and fits in that, into that two rule pretty well. But again, we haven't seen him at all in competitive. I believe this is the first time I've seen him picked up. Yep. So I'm really excited to see how it works, especially with like Rubik. I think they can just burst someone down very, very quickly with his ultimate. Yeah, and that's kind of what stands out to me too. When I look at Na'Vi, you know, they've got... S this is what I would call, <laughs> to use a term that has become synonymous with me because I used a, a whole bunch in one cast and of course it, it turned into a meme. 
uh, not long after. It's a very robust front three in the fact that you have a nice balance of physical DPS, magic DPS, and the pure utility that a Rubik pick is going to give you. A lot of good spells already for Rubik to try and swipe. Impale from Nyx Assassin going to be great if he can get cogs. That's even better. Hook, not the best if you don't have cogs, and obviously you can only have one at a time. But Navi with a very strong front three that's certainly going to be able to bring a lot of damage to bear. Now, seeing the Life Stealer and the Rubik out already, Skywrath Mage, you know, and again, I've never casted him, so correct me if I'm wrong here. Seems like he would be a little weak in mid just because of how easy he should be to gank. One way potentially to take pressure off of him would be to run an offensive tri lane. Right. I actually haven't seen him pair versus Nyx either. It seems like um, Skywrath usually goes for a lot of intel because he is very, very man intensive and his first skills very man are uh, very independent. But Nyx Assassin with his mana burn can just take him out of the fight. I remember I was like level six with him once and I couldn't even cast all four of my spells. He's just right. that that intensive. So with one mana burn, we'll probably see him not being able to do much in team fights. Well, looking at the bands that have come out, we can see QPAD definitely wanting to make sure they have the advantage in reach, banning out the Storm Spirit and the Puck. Great initiators and counter initiators in their own right. Less track, just great to take out, especially when you see a Rubik on the other side. Navi taking out just what I would call strong game, strong mid game heroes. I mean, whenever you see Shadow Demon, he's great all game. He's, in my opinion, the strong, like, I have to disagree with Puppy as bad as that is to say. I think Shadow Demon is just a phenomenal. Hero, I'm actually surprised that he uh, doesn't get picked up in the front six more often than he does. Juggernaut and TA, though, very strong mid-game heroes that could potentially give this lineup from Navi some trouble. When you see the LS and the, the Skywrath Mage, now with the Prophet, I mean, it's not that they can't go late if they have to, but, you know, Navi's team, especially now that you see a Gyrocopter picked up by QPAD, this seems to me to be a Navi squad or a Navi composition that definitely wants to get the bulk of their work done between 20 and 30 minutes. Right, and I think they probably will aggressive triple lane. Furion is very good at putting pressure in the aggressive triple if you choose to safe lane him, right. and they do need to take some early game pressure off Skywrath Mage. That is, is seemingly his weakness. He's just very, very easy to gank. Well, with the gyrocopter picked up, the one concern I would have with that is you're almost guaranteed to give solo lane farm to a hero you do not want to give solo lane farm to. They, you know, and depending on how well they sniff it out, there's always the option of, uh, you know, at this point they don't really have a mid unless they want to want to run the clockwork there. I wouldn't hate that at all. So they might be looking for another support to round things out, or they could try to do something like solo farm the clockwork. But with a gyro and a lone druid, those are two heroes that really thrive in one-on-one -on -one situations, especially if you can get them in a comfortable one-on-one -on -one situation. So if they're sniffing the tri lane, what they might end up doing is sending the gyro or even the druid down to the solo long lane and then go ahead and put the gyro up against any kind of aggressive pressure coming out of Navi just because of how potent he is with Rocket Barrage early on. Enchantress going to be the fifth pickup for Navi. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see Bane not taken by q -Pen. Bane's usually one of those heroes that, okay, if they first pick Lifesitter, we're definitely going to pick Bane. They do have cogs to deal with it, and Lone Druid is decent versus it, but most teams just choose to have uh, his Enfeeble, which doesn't come off when Rage um, is casted, as well as Fiend's Grip to deal with the ever-so-annoying Lifestealer. Mm -hmm. Looks like we are going to be heading into the game. Dindy will be running on that Skywrath Mage as anticipated. Once again, want to thank everyone for making us a part of their day. And I'll tell you what we need to do real quick, Merlini. Apparently, we're not coming through on the in-game audio. So go ahead and make sure that's toggled on. Hopefully, that is on now for us. I just toggled mine on and off. And if you can do that as well, just to make sure our in-game ticket holders. And by the way, if you don't have the in-game tickets yet, you kind of should. It's priced to own at just $2. And given the quality of content we're likely to have, don't know why you wouldn't want to take a shot if you have a little extra cash laying around and watch in-game true full 1080p. So hopefully our in-game viewers are hearing us now. Sorry you missed out on the draft analysis. You heard us all scream collectively as the Skywrath Mage was picked up. And really excited to see how they're going to they're gonna end up doing this. I mean, seeing Puppy pick up the Enchantress, that kind of throws an extra wrinkle into things. Haven't seen an Enchantress offensive tri lane in quite some time. Yep, and I'm curious to see Cupad's lane too. Cupad has like pretty much five heroes that could solo. Clock, uh, Nyx, you want to go ahead and introduce the lineups? Yeah, I could do that if you want. Usually, try to wait and see if there's going to be any cross-river action. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So we will go ahead and run through, see who's handling who. We'll have the captain on Navi's side, Puppy handling our Enchantress. Going to have, um, yeah, the unnamed Navi player. I'll run through the rest and we'll figure out who that is. Dindy, of course, setting up shop in mid. We'll have a Vost, no doubt playing on our lifesteal. That's going to be Kuro on Rubik, so no doubt about that now. And Phonic going to be playing on our Nature's 
Prophet on the other side of the river. We got Sing Sing. He's on the Druid, and he's hanging around mid for the moment, so looking to do something with that. With the Darkseer last pick, makes sense to send him to the off lane. He's going to be dominant there. We're going to have many handling our Nyx Assassin. Darkseer, as mentioned, going to be played by Select off in that off lane. Wagamama going to be farming up the Gyrocopter with JRX playing on our Clockwork. And we've seen Navi do this before. It looks like they're putting Life Sealer solo in the off lane, and they will rotate and support if necessary. We see Clockwork already middle. I'm not really sure what he's doing around there, though. So it looks like Hubat is doing a 3-1-1 with a pretty defensive tri lane, and Nyx isn't going to get much up there at all. Yeah, and I, we've actually seen teams do this a little bit. I saw this in the G1 some, and it's just basically banking on the fact that Life Stealer can really still be of, of high value, yeah. even if his start isn't that great. And, you know, he's going to be able to get up and soak up experience at the very least just because of how easily Rage can get him out of trouble. Rubik has made his way up. That will be Kuro once again. And again, an, a quick pause here from QPad. So, um, but one thing I did want to talk about, I wanted you to cover from a professional point of view or a high level point of view talk to me a bit about this mid matchup we see dendy and sing sing and again you know whenever you look at this these are two heroes that don't well i mean at least with the lone druid and of course skyrath does need his level so seeing him mid is no surprise both very susceptible to early ganks however so i mean at this point who do you think comes out ahead here and it looks like he's uh we're gonna dendy's actually gonna be getting a little bit of help here from his good friend the wild wing ripper uh, I think that Singh actually has the advantage, at least until 6. If it's just one-on-one, -on -one, the Spirit Bear should be able to outlast hit uh, Dendi. Uh, Skyrath Mage is pretty low base damage. If you check him out, he only has 3 branches on him, so 50 base. Or actually, he has 6 intel on him, so only 47 base. And then compare that to the Bear, which is around 50 and then 30 mm -hmm. on his uh, companion. That's you know 80 damage, and it should be pretty hard to last hit if... There is no interruption, but currently we see the Wild Wing, as you pointed out, from Puppy causing a little bit of trouble for Sing, and he has to stay on his hill. And we can see Sing Sing already eating quite a bit of damage coming out from that Arcane Bolt, as you had mentioned. He has put two in the Arcane Bolt, one in a Concussive Shot, so we're not seeing, uh, not seeing the other leveled quite yet. And very excited to see this, you know, I, I, you know, Dindy on this hero in particular, you know, you're talking about a spam happy hero who is going to be very much based on making something out of nothing. We actually just missed first blood up at top as Puppy manages to come down and gank the Darkseers actually down at bottom. So it was not focusing a bit too much on mid. Sorry about that. But early on, Navi off to a good start. Yeah, it's a very, very dangerous position for Slug to be over here. Sometimes you do want to creep skip, but not when you don't know where the heroes are. Right. We're going to see JRX forced back into the jungle. He dipped down and Rubik managing to pick up the rune. But as this continues to go to proceed, we can see the Prophet's doing quite well. Really quite even farm everywhere. If there's anything that you could talk about that's a little surprising, it's the fact that Gyro and Lifestealer are actually very, very close in farm as of right now. Mm-hmm. And Kiro actually didn't start off with his Boots First build that we see sometimes. And we see Funnick actually pick up Boots First. So it just doesn't look like a Midas rush from Funnick. And we'll hopefully see a lot more action in the 5 to 10 minute phase of the game. And Puppy is smoked in middle with um, only one Troll Creep, which is about to expire. And a Seder Tormentor, as well as Kiro behind him. We can see Select playing a bit more cautiously now than he was cutting creeps with a, an Enchantress in the jungle. Sing Sing's way out there, and yep, there's the Concussive Shot, the Slow, the Silence. There's the Telekinesis, and this will be a return kill very easily as Poppy notches that with the help of the Seder Tormentor up atop. Looks like they were thinking about maybe going on the Life Stealer, but instead unable to catch up with him. Two to nothing, and Navi's off to a real solid start so far. Mm -hmm. They're just making way better use out of their supports. Um, the problem with QPAD's lineup is their supports actually require a lot of levels. We might see them go on the life slitter right now, though, but... A yep, little mana burn, not a whole lot more. But, I mean, if you, you know, that's just the strength of Nyx Assassin. Being able to effectively mana burn him down takes away the comfort zone that is Rage. It doesn't take a whole lot of mana, but even being able to make him play back a little while can get him behind, you know, incrementally over time. Yep, and we see a Fortify actually pop from Navi. I believe that was on accident. I don't think it will cost them uh, too much, though. Cupad doesn't really have a very strong tower pushing lineup this early. Now, you know, big question to me when I look at the way these lineups are working. We can see the Kuro has made his way down. Puppy's obviously right in the jungle as well. 
When are we going to see Dindy get active? I mean, again, you know, this is a hero we haven't seen in competitive Dota 2 play a whole lot, but what's going to be the word go? Is he just going to sit and soak as much as he can in mid and try to extend the laning phase? Or at some point, is he going to decide it's time to make the most of his skill set? Uh, I mean, oh, it looks like Funnick's going on middle. Yep, there's Fun Funnick TPs in, lands the Sprout, and Sing Sing once again will end up dropping. And this is one of the big reasons we talked about why you don't always see a lone Druid mid. In fact, you rarely see him there unless the, the situation is very much to his advantage. He's just so easy to gank, and Na'Vi has an excellent team for applying pressure from the sides. I mean, it seems like right now Na'Vi is just putting a ton of pressure on Sing in middle, having rotations from Puppy, rotations from Kiro, rotations from Funic, and it's really on Cupad to move around. Dendi's fine where he is. He can just get farm and levels in mid, and they're not really shutting out Havos too much in the top lane. So I think once Cupad actually gets some levels on these two, then maybe Dendi will start rotating from mid. But for right now, there's no r real good reason uh, for him to do so. Sing's quite underleveled, almost two full levels behind, and he doesn't even have his bear up right now. So a full 60 seconds left on his resummon. We can see Kuro is beginning to get himself some levels, has moved into lane as the Prophet has taken up station in the jungle alongside of Puppy. Back to our, uh, back to our Skywrath Mage, and again, we're going to focus on this hero a lot just because this is one of the first times we've both seen him. Talk to me about his build. You know, we can talk about items that, that would seem to synergize well with him, but based on your experience and the way this game seems to be playing out, what kind of build do you anticipate we're going to be able to see here, Merlini? Uh, well, in terms of skill build, usually just for max arcane bolt and then one level one concussive for the slow because the slow is the same at level one as is the range, mm -hmm. um, and then max ancient seal for burst potential. In terms of items, we usually see arcane. Um, sometimes we see entrance, but most of the time arcane, just because his ultimate costs 350 mana at level one. And we're going to see Darkseer track down again as Puppy and Funic able to catch up with him down in that bottom lane, make it four to nothing, and Na'Vi is just grinding them out. And tell you the truth, this is something Na'Vi can do. I mean, any, any team that's effective can do this, but it's not really a style I would say fits them very much. Now Sing Sing going to be focused down, eats the ultimate, and is just going to be bursted down as soon as Dindy catches him, and he will. Two TP reactions are there. Funic throws out the Sprout, Select able to get around it and really... Didn't do himself any favors. Now the Ursa's tracking him down. He's going to end up dropping behind the tower as well. So he TPs in. There was one canceled TP at the same time. So that's two exchanged for none. Six to nothing. And really at this point, this is already beginning to feel a little bit out of control. And the problem is Dindy's getting involved a lot more now. So that's helping him out even more in level. So his damage relative to the health pools of, the, of his enemy is certainly going to be higher than it has in any business being even with him in mid. Mm -hmm. And yes, this game is getting a little bit out of control. I don't don't really know what Cupad was aiming for with this lineup, but they don't really have any anyone that can do much early game. Right. Like we see Puppy and Kiro very effective at early levels and running around, but Clockwork and Nyx have been sitting top, but they can't really do that much without levels. You really need that early level six on Nyx Assassin to do that much, and without hookshot on Clockwork, you can't really gank effectively. So we just see Na'Vi taking complete control of the early game, but no towers are down yet. The gold difference is only around 3,000, and we see Denny continually applying pressure on Sing in the middle. Yeah, I mean, Sing Sing is not going to be able to hang. He's He just landed. He just got back to mid. And within 10 seconds, he's down below half health. That's not going to get any better. I mean, this is just what happens when you have a Skywrath Mage that gets off to this kind of a start. And he has picked up his arcane boots. So, I mean, the gyrocopter to me is beginning to feel like the essential hero here. He's off to a decent start. He's tops on the board in terms of farm, so that's certainly nice. But, you know, he's going to have to get active. Otherwise, you're going to see this team from Na'Vi, especially with the split push potential that they're going to have out of Funnick and Puppy on the Enchantress. They're going to be able to just take over the map here shortly. Yep, and Darkseer Bottom is actually very, very poor too. Level 6, and he has quite only 18 last hits, and he was only against a single lane. Uh, I mean, Puppy did rotate a little bit, but uh, by comparison, the Nakes is around the same as CS, and he was versus a triple lane. So right. this triple lane needs to get a little bit more accomplished. It looks like they're creep pulling, really, really, really trying to get that level 6. And Dendi has an invis rune in mid. He seems like he's just getting every rune and all the support in the world that he needs to get to snowball. 
Well, if there's any one bright spot that QPAT seems to have, it's that the life stealer, Havost, is really... I mean, he was doing okay to begin with, but it looks like, hang on, we're going to have Sing Sing silenced out again, ate the concussive shell, and Funix there, Sprout from the low ground, going to trap the bear in. Ulti going to be off the mark, though. However, he is telekinesis down to the low ground, so no way he makes it back to the well safely. Seven to nothing, they add another kill. And, I'll, you know, and here's something that occurs to me seeing that. And, you know, this is, you know, I, I don't mean to compare and, and be super negative about it. That, took, that was a kill that took a long time to make happen, or to make happen comparative to the, what time it should have taken. We're actually going to see a call down popped here. And, yeah, I mean, Navi just isn't scared. And, wow, he actually got Rocket Barrage. So, but with that time, no TP reaction. Seems to me that was a missed opportunity for QPAD. And now we're going to have JRX caught out. He's going to eat the damage from Dindy and Funic. Another kill on the board. And Minnie takes a look at them. He's undercover a Vandetta. We will have a brief pause. So we'll get back into the action in just a moment. But, you know, in mid there, it wasn't the best executed gank on the Lone Druid. They missed with the ulti off of the Skywrath Mage. And there was no TP reaction. And when I compare that to, say, the play style of even a, a Dignitas is a good example, a team that I think reacts exceptionally well, that's an opportunity for them to get a turnaround that they just flat out didn't even try. Mm -hmm. And they are lacking vision too. They don't have any obs wars right now, and seeing needs some support from his team. Looks like Minship tried to go, or sorry, not Minship. Mini tried to go on <laughs> Funic on top. I just read the name, yep, uh, I but unable to go Funic. I do that all the time. Don't worry. I've, I've even griped at him about it. The guys who append their uh, their significant other's name, and I end up calling them by their lover's name. Oh, esports culture. Anyway, we're 10 minutes in. It's 8 to nothing. Navi well in control of this game. Almost 5,000 gold. Their advantage in excess of 5,000 in experience. And yeah, Rubik. <laughs> Rubik is actually... He's in druid form, and he has, he has uh, rocket barrage. Not very often you get to see that. <laughs> Yep, only with 315 move speed, too. <laughs> so we can see some pressure being applied here to Mick. QPAD might look to make something happen. Clockwork's not even level 6 yet, though. I mean, that's, you know, that hurts them a ton. We've seen it a ton of times, Merlinia. Clockwork gets ahead in levels and can take a game over. When he's under level, though, especially when you don't have hook to even begin to defend your tier 1s, you're just hurting in a bad, bad way. Yep, it looks like this T1 is... Oh, they do have a sentry. And here we go. They're going to engage. And yeah, Nyx Assassin just got melted by the ulti. Sprout's going to be off the mark. Call down should catch a couple. And Kuro trying to make a run for it. In the meantime, Puppy has another kill via Impetus from the low ground. JRX being spammed to death. And here comes Puppy engaging on the Sing with Enchant. Sing slow down. Funix there as well. Sprout's going to be off the mark. That's two. Funix is just flat out missed. But in the end, it doesn't matter. That's a three for nothing trade in the loss of a tier one. And they've actually, I mean, it's one thing to say someone leaves like six to nothing, seven to nothing. When you get in the double, okay, never mind. Looks like game one is in the books, was going to say. It's not very often you see a game get 12 minutes in and there's still a goose egg on one side. It looks like it's going to stay that way. About as well a played game as you're going to see out of Na'Vi and Skywrath Mage. Working out pretty well, I think. Yep. We didn't even see what item build he was going for. We only see Magic Wand, Bottle, and Arcane Boots. I'm yep. curious to see what item he has afterwards. But, very quick game, and I hope Q-Pad tries to... Q-Panda tries to draft a more early game lineup. Didn't seem like they had any control. Sure, Gyro got free farm, but, I mean, what's happening to your Darkseer? What's happening to your Lone Druid in the meantime? And they really need to pick some uh, better early games so they don't get crushed in the 1-10 to minute phase like we saw this game. Absolutely agree. I mean, and, you know, you can talk about their draft, and when you look at their lineup, it's easy to understand. They had good physical damage dealers in the Lone Druid and the Gyro. They were going to have the magic damage to fall back on coming out of the Gyrocopter for some early game punch. But in the end, I mean, Na'Vi just executed. And, you know, as much as, you know, as many as mistakes as we can point to, I feel like this is more a win for Na'Vi than Q-Pad really beating themselves up. Either way, not often you see a game end in 12 minutes. We just saw it here in game one of this best of three. You're here at the Curse Invitational. Our first game is in the book. Still got at least one more to go. Na'Vi going to look to extend that goose egg and make it two to nothing in, the, in their sweep of the first series. Q-Pad, though, wants to get things back on track. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. I'm EC, joined by Merlini. Game two of this best of three coming up next. Stick with us.